here comes the sun up on our last day before we arrive in Chiapas. Right there in that little jog of our green tracking line is where the nets were. The first one on the right was where we hooked it on our prop and then the other one up top is where we had to avoid going around the rest of it. Pretty deep water to have fish nets there. Our location on the map and the little X up at the top left there is our is Chiapas, where we will check in Mexico. It's a pretty long drive to the marina. Uh, we've arrived at Chiapas Marina and we have Customs and Port Authority checking us out. And I'll go show you, they have a doggy that's gonna come do a sniff, sniff test of our boat. Is the doggy here already? Where's the dog? Oh, the dog is down here. <laughs> These two gentlemen, one of them will bring the dog, the dog aboard. Can't see the dog. Oh, there's the dog and he's going to come, he's going to come sniff our boat out to make sure we didn't transport any weapons or drugs. Taku will be next. <laughs> Oh, they have a cat that they're going to have to. It's escaping. Escaping. <laughs> we're checking our registrations and all our documents right now. That's the end of us. The dog actually didn't come on board for some reason. Never said why. The dog, there it is. The dog is leaving. I, I was all excited for the dog to come aboard. And even Taku has put their pussycat into a box. Huh. Okay. Bye, doggy. Bye, doggy. The next day we are taken to the border of Mexico and Guatemala, where we will get our temporary import permit. That allows wave riders to stay in Mexico for the next 10 years, if we would like. On our way back, we stop off at Home Depot, yay! And then a trek to Walmart for some food. Now it's time to check the damage on our props from the fishnet wrapped around it. Andrew takes off the zinc. Yep, it's doing its job, but the prop has too many parts for us to safely take it off while we are still in the water. We've come here to get some pulled pork and quesadillas. It's right on the side of the road here. Getting our bikes. Getting some for Bob and Ed also on Taku. Here's this little roadside restaurant. She packages up our food and we make the nine kilometers ride back to the boat to give it to Taku. Back at the boat, Bob works hard on opening up a coconut that he picked off one of the trees here at the marina. That's what it looked like before. Look at all the milk, water, whoa, lots of it. Oh, nice. Oh, gorgeous. Yep. Sweet. They're all hard already. Andrew and I go riding with a couple locals we met. We find this cotton tree. Okay, we're riding and this is a cashew tree. This is the fruit. Take a look. There's the fruit. That's right. Oh, it looks just like a red pepper and with the a cashews. stem. And the cashews on top. As oh, the wow. Cheese, cool. <laughs> that is the neatest thing. And this one's thing. edible. Let me try to open it. Yeah, okay. We'll picture you open it. It smells funny, though. Does it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> funny, like something dead. Juice? Oh, yeah. I'm going to smell it. Whoa. Whoa, cashew juice all over. Yeah, it's very juicy. <laughs> I can smell that. Can you try to smell it? Ooh! Yeah, 
Yeah. So they're not quite ripe enough yet. Yeah. Have to be a lot redder. And you can eat the fruit part of it, the red part also. It stinks pretty bad. Just past the marina. We're headed on to a sand road now. It's along the beach here. So this area is looked after by about 20 families of the area. And what they're doing is growing shrimp here for their own consumption in this mangrove section. There's quite a few herons in here. It's got some kind of large fruit on it, but it's the flower that's amazing. I will look for a tree that's closer to me that has the flowers on it. Here's the, here's the flower. It is huge. And the fruit right under it. Our local friends don't even know what this coconut-sized fruit is. Join us next week as we take a tour of a local coffee plantation before we leave Chiapas. We even do a taste test.